hey guys how you doing i hope you guys are doing great because as you guys can see i'm doing fantastic okay i'm doing fantabulous <laughs> and i feel so pretty but that's to be expected nothing new there anyway in today's video i'm going to be talking about letting go Caca! <laughs> If you guys used to watch the real, there's something Adrian used to do about she's called it caca, like letting go, okay? Letting go of relationships, letting go of friendships, letting go of business partnerships, letting go of situationships, of family strings and family ties that do not serve us, that do not help us live our best lives, that are draining us, that are weighing us down, that are making us suffer letting go of relationships that are draining us of our light basically and basically dimming our light okay because i in fact something happened recently i don't want to go into details but a story i heard of someone and i'm just like why why can't we let go especially women why can't we let go of relationships okay i know we talked about this in Nello's uh, loudly woman why is it that women why is that people in general find it hard to let go but especially women we need to train ourselves to let go of situations that no longer serve us okay we need to know when to take a bow we need to know when this whole situation is no longer what it was supposed to be it's no longer what i signed up for it's no longer what i expected so let me just take my leave like we need to train ourselves to know when it is time to let go okay many of us are holding on to so much so much baggage so much nonsense so much rubbish okay basically rubbish <laughs> things that don't serve us many of us are holding on to it because oh what will people say because of you know maybe the history when it comes to friendships oh we have a history you know we've known each other all our lives you know this and that so you are accommodating and you are tolerating a lot of nonsense a lot of things that are just that are just killing you you're tolerating it because you have history with this person oh because you don't want it to look as if you don't people to talk you don't want people to, to say oh that you cannot keep friendships that's why you're holding on to that friendship you don't want people to say ah so you, are, you, are, you have left your marriage you don't want people to call you divorcee so you're holding on to that marriage you don't want people to say oh this business has failed so you're holding on to that business you don't want people to say oh yeah you didn't make the right decisions or you are not smart enough so you're holding on to that course you're holding on to that <laughs> course like that you didn't even many of us decided the courses were going to do in university out of peer pressure out of family pressure out of lack of information or from a place of lack of information from a place of ignorance we chose courses let it go my sister let it go my brother there is no point you holding on to those things okay because one thing you need to know and i didn't write any scripts for this i didn't even i just i didn't even plan it i just decided to sit down and film this video okay one thing we need to know is that we have a lot to offer this world we have a lot of potential the human spirit is very resilient the human mind is very strong you are capable of more than you can imagine okay so do not write yourself off off of <laughs> do not write yourself off because of you know mistakes that you made in the past because mistakes that you made you know in, in the in the in the recent past maybe oh you made a mistake yesterday so you want to wait for 10 years before you correct that mistake no even if you made a mistake an hour ago you can correct it now even if you made a mistake 10 seconds ago you can correct it now okay we thank god for the gift of life as long as you are alive and breathing and you are well you can correct almost any mistake okay i say almost any mistake because some things that you can't really correct you can't if you kill somebody you can't bring the person back to life okay and even the ones that we cannot correct you can actually learn from it and grow from it and you know make better things out of it okay so please let's go of those relationships let's go of that man that man that is draining you of your spirit why do you feel like you can't get better why why do you feel like your life is over because oh you spent 20 years with this man and so even though even though even though you have spent 30 years with this man even though all oh, the you, you spent all the your best years with him or you, who told you, you you spent all your best years with him if you were not happy those are not your best years it doesn't matter that oh you married him when you were 18 and now you are currently 65 uh, where, where, where else can you go from here what else can you do with your life no that is a very wrong mindset please that is a very that is the mindset that is killing a lot of women okay it is okay for you to say you know what 
it was good while it lasted or maybe it wasn't good while it lasted let us move on let me move on okay like i said your best years are still ahead of you you cannot just judge i mean if you're not even happy or fulfilled in your life with your with that man why do you feel like your best years are, have passed those are obviously not your best years you are not happy you are not growing you are not flourishing you are sad you are you are you you spend most of that time angry and bitter so why are you thinking that those were your best years move on sis move on it is okay for you to say you know what all these things that have been happening to me they are quite unfortunate i have tried my best for this person i have tried my best to make it work i have tried my best to make this business this idea this course this uh, relationship i have tried my best to make it work and it is no longer working you should be humble enough for me it is even humility you should be humble enough to accept that it is a failure and you have to move on because sometimes the reason why we're holding on to some of these things is because of pride you don't want people to come and say oh you are a failure you don't want people to come and say oh you failed at this you don't want people to come and say oh this thing did not work out to two people who cares who cares like who cares most people are occupied and preoccupied with their lives and there's something i keep saying and i'm going to keep saying it okay that's what people say that you are, you are trying to avoid they're already saying it trust me they are already saying it you think people don't know that you're suffering in that marriage they know my sister they know everybody knows eh let me break it to you everybody knows that you are suffering in that marriage everybody is just pretending not to know because you are pretending not to be suffering okay the moment you open your mouth and say wow look at what this man has been doing to me everybody will tell you that they know <laughs> like you see people say telling you either that they know either that they saw the signs either that they heard from somebody or you know they people know so that thing that you're trying to avoid let people know say they're already saying it okay that your business that is not doing well everybody already knows your business is not doing well hmm? let me break it to you everybody already knows the reason why it is not out there the reason why people are not saying it is because you're still holding on to it for your dear life so let everybody pretend along let's all let, let's all pretend like you are really making money from this thing that you're doing when we all know you're not making money from it okay we all know people know these things okay people are curious people are nosy people know these things but guess what as nosy and as curious as people are their own personal issues are still more so they use your own issues to while away time before they now go back to go and face their own issues so trust me it is not that deep for most people okay the only people that is really deep for are people that are directly affected by it. maybe your family members your children your husband whoever is directly affected maybe that's the person that it is deep for every other person it is not that deep we all have our own skeletons in our closets we all have our own problems that we're trying to solve we all have our own aspirations our goals our wants our failures okay we all have these things so just let go of that mindset that people are going to judge you and so if they judge you and so okay who are the people that are judging you that's something i always say i think i, I was telling someone this thing recently that you see this thing about oh somebody cursing you somebody judging you somebody doing something to you i don't it doesn't move me why it doesn't move me is this right who do you think you are who on earth do you think you are that your judgment is supposed to matter to me? Your judgment is supposed to make me sad. Your curses is supposed to affect my life. Your insults is supposed to make me feel bad. You're not seeing me as the beauty, as the absolute beauty that I am. You're not seeing me as that. Who do you think you are that you have the right to have an opinion? I don't care your relationship to me. I don't care that you're my father, you're my mother, you're my sister, you're my brother, you're my husband, you're my children, you're my anything. I don't care about your relationship to me who do you think you are that you have that kind of power over me? You don't. You do not. You don't have the power to dictate how my life is going to turn out. You don't have the power to dictate how, my li how I'm going to see myself. You don't have that power. You cannot have that power because you did not create me. You did not create me. The one who created me said I am perfect. He said I am beautiful. I am wonderfully made. Okay, so who are you to have an opinion about who I am? Who are you? Like, we give other people too much power over our lives. It's so sad. You are with a man who is insulting you, he's abusing you, he's, he's, he's beating you, he's doing so much to you and you are still there because you are making him the lord of your life. You are telling God, see, many women will go to hell, eh, because they stayed in abusive relationships. Quote me anywhere, okay? When you see me in heaven, you ask me about it. <laughs> When you see me in heaven, I will explain better to you. A lot of women are going to go to hell because of who they married. Like, is that sad? And so many people are going to go to heaven because of who they married. It is that serious. So why are you stuck with that man who is making you sad and miserable? He's making you angry. He's making you harbor bitterness and resentment. 
you don't have you, you don't have time to serve your God. You don't have time to impact the world. You don't have time to you know show the world the beauty of God. Mm? You don't have time to fulfill your destiny on earth because you are married to a monster and you are still there. A lot of women will go to hell because of the men they are married to. A lot of people will go to hell because of friendships they are holding on to. Because you are holding on to that friendship, you are holding on to that relationship, but you are not happy. You are not happy, okay? You're not, not, not only are you not happy, you are bitter, you are sad, you are resentful. Those things are not going to allow you to enter heaven. You cannot enter heaven with bitterness and sadness and resentment. You are not going to enter heaven like that. Okay, in case you do not know, let me tell you now. I'm not God, but I'm telling you the fact. If you harbor resentment, if you harbor bitterness, you're always angry, you're sad, you're not happy for people because you're not happy where you are. Okay, most of these trolls we see online, they're not happy people. They are very, very incredibly sad people. They are going through a lot in their life, in their lives. That's why they can come out and be trolls. That's why they come out and all they see in the world is negativity because they are going through some negativity. So how do you expect such a person to enter heaven? How they to make heaven? Because in their own way, where they are, they are sabotaging other people. They are wicked to other people. They are doing all kinds of malicious things to other people because of the things that are being done to them. Okay? It is very, very difficult to see an abuser who is not abusive in one way or the other. It's very difficult. I mean, an abused, okay? A victim. It's very difficult to see an, ab an, ab an abused person who isn't in turn an abuser. Hurt people, hurt people. Okay, hurt people, hurt people. If you if you don't heal, if you don't heal properly, you're going to bleed on others. It is a fact of life. So why don't you just go and heal? There's more to this life than that man. We are giving him too much power. Too much. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you carry? Do you know what you possess? Do you know what you are made of? That are allowing one one man somewhere to come and to come and destroy your life. Yeah, you are allowing one relationship somewhere to come and destroy your life. Let me give you a very practical example. I never saw myself doing what I am doing today, right? I never saw myself on YouTube. I knew that I was always going to talk to people in one way or the other, okay? I always thought I was going to be a writer, right? I, I, <laughs> okay, I had the plans of being a writer. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to have novels. I'm going to impact the world in that way. But I never saw myself doing what I'm doing now, the way I'm doing it, okay? Now, a series of events led me to where I am. And one of those series of events is being married to my husband, right? Now, what I mean by that is, I married a man who, first of all, I am happy with and I love. A man who loves me, a, a man who cherishes me, a man who allows me to be myself, a man who allows me to be free, to explore, a man who has money. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> a man who has money, okay? What I mean by that is this, right? I married a man who is okay. Now, because I married a man who is okay and who is taking care of me and taking care of the home and taking care of everything, I was able to double into YouTube. I was able to say, you know what, I can't work anymore. I, can't, I had to resign from my banking job because I had a man who could take care of me. So I resigned from my banking job. He did not stop me. I started YouTube, even though he wasn't the, the, my biggest fan <laughs> initially. He wasn't you know, pushing me to do YouTube. But he didn't stop me from doing YouTube. I converted one room in our house to my studio. He never stopped me. And in fact, all the houses we've lived in, like the last house and this house, one room is always my room that I use for. Aside my bedroom, I still have a room that I use for my YouTube. He never stopped me for one day. He never argued or complained about it. The only thing that he asked me is, okay, when we have visitors, where would they stay? I'll just give him the story of where they will stay or whatever I planned. And that's it, okay? So, because I had such a man, I'm able to do what I'm doing today. And to the glory of God and to the best of my abilities and best of my knowledge, I feel like I have impacted a lot of lives, both directly and indirectly, okay? I have impacted lives by following my dreams, so they feel like they can also follow their dreams because I am following my dreams. I have impacted lives because of the kind of content that I create, the kind of, you know, things I show, my motherhood journey, my infertility journey like a lot of ways i have impacted lives and i know it because i get you people's comments and responses and i'm like whoa <laughs> in fact i get some comments i'm just like okay uh, do, uh yeah uh you guys uh, uh, uh like I, I didn't expect it to be this serious, right? Maybe when I come here and make a video about something and then someone takes it seriously and does it and implements it and it, it gives them good results, I'm like, oh, whoa, I, I never, you know, thought it was going to be that impactful in other people's lives. I was just saying it in case it helps one person and it ended up helping many people, okay? That's for the ones that came out and told me that it helps them. Some people, it will help them, but they won't ever give me feedback. It's not a problem. I'm not even complaining about that or anything. I'm just saying that, you know, most times, human, not everybody comes back to give feedback, okay?
Anyway, all this to say that imagine if I had married the wrong man. Imagine if I had married one man who was abusive, who did not tolerate any kind of, ah, you, you want to do what? What do you mean by you want to do what? Go and continue your banking job and bring money for us to share. You know, imagine if I had married the kind of man that I say, ah, I want to start YouTube. And he's like, eh, I don't want to ever see my wife on YouTube. So you want to go on YouTube and be showing people your body. So people will start toasting you. A lot of men have that kind of idea about, you know, their wives being out there. Or even if, oh, I said, do you mean, let's say I was, being, I was a YouTuber before we met. Maybe when I now have kids and I need him to help me with the kids, you'll not be like, no, you better take care of your kids. Or you better leave that YouTube and go and take care of your kids if it's that one, you know. Just it can go anyway like there are, there are so many worst case scenarios that i could paint for you right now but i'm just saying imagine if i had not married my type of husband or the husband that i married i will not be here on youtube doing doing this okay looking pretty and just spreading the good news <laughs> I will not be on, I won't be here on YouTube doing it. Even the writing that I wanted to be a writer. I might not have done the writing because right now I'm not even doing the writing, okay? So, and mind you, I dated other people before I dated my husband though. So, it's not like it's the first man that just appeared that I just married. No, I had so many prospects of who to marry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell. I had so many people coming for my hand in marriage. Though. The first person that came to marry me, I was 17. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, I was just 17. People used to think I was older than I was. So, on the road, there's no way I, there's no day I would go out that man will not follow me. That, as in, I mean, follow, like, literally follow me like, like fly, okay? So, I had so many prospects, but somehow, thankfully, God helped me and I made the right choice. Imagine if I had followed one of those men that were disturbing me and then today I'm now miserable somewhere. Imagine if I hadn't let go of some of those relationships that weren't serving, serving me. Okay, imagine if I was still stuck with one dude that I was dating at some point in my life and I didn't even have sense. Imagine if I was stuck with such a dude and, and right now I'd be miserable. I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't have the children that I have. Okay, I wouldn't be able to... Because, like again, I, I always say that your children are actually arrows that you shoot into the world. I don't know, it's not even me that said it, it's in the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> I, always say, I always say, yeah, your children are actually arrows that you're going to shoot into the world, right? They're actually like an extension of you. So when you're a miserable person, imagine kind of children you're going to send into the world. They're going to send in miserable children into the world as well. Okay, who now in turn send in other miserable? So yeah, it is a generational thing. You are destroying your generation. You are destroying your lineage by sticking with those irresponsible, no good, you know, useless men. Yeah? You're destroying a lot. It's more than just you at this point. Think of your daughters. Think of your sons. It's more than just you at this point, okay? For me, people say, oh, she's so brave. She stayed with him. To me, that's not bravery. To me, that's cowardice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to castigate anybody, but I have to say things the way they are just to be able to you know, get this message across. To me, you are not brave because you stayed with a cheating, abusive man for 50 years or 100 years. You are not brave. I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody. It's not my intention to offend, but I just have to say it, okay? Whenever I hear, oh, she stayed with her husband for so long. He was so wicked to her. He was so abusive. He was so this. But she went on her knees and prayed, and she endured, and she fasted, and she changed her ways, and she adjusted herself, and she suppressed, and she humbled herself, and she submitted herself, and she... Eh, and then finally, after 50 years, 60 years, the man is now, you know, normal. Not that he's even fantastical. He's now normal. He's, he's no longer abusing her. He's no longer beating her. He's no longer, you know, cheating on her or whatever. Then people want to say it as, you know, she's a strong woman. I'm sorry, she's not strong. I don't see it as strength. I see it as a lack of self-worth, okay? I'm sorry if, we, uh, yeah, I, I just, that's how I see it, okay? That's how me, I personally, I see it. For me, I applaud women who have the courage to walk away from relationships that no longer serve them, to walk away from marriages, to walk away from friendships, to walk away from, you know, some people, you have friends that don't even like you. You know they don't like you. They maltreat you. They treat you anyhow. They're not there for you when you need them. They're just... They don't nonsense, but you don't have the courage to walk away from them because you want to be in a group. You want you want to be accepted by all means. You want people to accept you. Like you feel you don't, you feel incomplete if you are on your own. <laughs> I'm so sorry, oh, but you are killing yourself. You are damaging yourself for nothing. Okay, and you have nobody to blame except yourself. You have nobody to blame. Okay, if you think God will punish them because of what they did to you, uh, you are mistaken. <laughs> Me, and my brother, my just yesterday, we were talking about how. The wicked always 
People are talking about, oh, swear for this person. Oh, the person is so wicked. Ah, karma, karma. I'm sorry, karma does not exist, okay? I hate to break it to you. Karma does not exist, okay? You know why the wicked last a long time? Good people die easily, but you see the wicked ones, and then, and then they live long past. You know why? God is giving them grace, okay? You've forgotten that God's children as well. You've, forgot, you've forgotten that God created them as well, right? God is giving them grace so that they will repent. So it doesn't matter if they were wicked for 90 years. If at the 90, 91st year they repent, God is happy. God will accept them with open arms. In fact, accept them very well. Remember the story of the prodigal son? Yeah? Okay. If you don't know it, go and read your Bible about it. The story of the prodigal son just lets us know that it's not by who is the nicest or who is the goodiest or who... who, who uh, what was goodiest? <laughs> It's not by who is the best, who, who acts well, who did not sin, who is humble, who is this one, who was the maltreated in relationship. It's not by that one. This our God is very merciful. Though. God is very merciful, I tell you. God is very merciful. It's not by how bad the person's past was. If the person can just accept God and humble themselves and repent, heaven straight up, straight up. It is not by how much you suffered on earth. Though. If you don't accept Christ in your heart and really, really repent, hell straight one way one way ticket to hell is what you are, you are you are acquiring for yourself just i don't want to let you guys know because some people feel like oh you can't say that what are people that have suffered so much it's not by how, how much you suffered if it's by how much you suffered all of us all of us, all of us in nigeria will go to we'll go to heaven <laughs> it's not by how long you suffered it's not by that one that's never been by that there's nobody in heaven that got there because they suffered so much and i'm in heaven no Okay, except you suffered for Christ, then that's a different case. But that, oh, I was so poor, I was so weak, I was so sick, so I'll go to heaven. It's not by that. Okay, so anyway, I have talked too long. Again, like I said, this video was not even planned. I just decided to just talk about it because I heard something that really upset me. Okay, please let's go. Find the courage to let's go. Seek help if you cannot find help. I did a better help um, sponsorship in, I think, two videos ago or three videos ago. Go and check it out. Okay. Seek help, seek therapy if you need to, okay? Talk to people, talk to other women. Listen to people like us that are here now advising you and telling you, okay? Just seek help. Do not remain there. Don't. Anyway, a word is enough for the wise. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.